Hi everyone, Mati here. In our last episode, we talked about Java records and how we can use them to create data classes without, without all that boilerplate code. And uh, it's a really fantastic feature introduced in Java 14. And by the end of the video, I mentioned that because of Java records, I now tend to avoid using Lombok. And some of you have been asking me, why did I say that? So I want to do this video so that you can have my opinion on why avoiding Lombok is better. And also, some of you may not know what Lombok is. So I briefly explain what Lombok is, how it works, and then uh, we can talk about why I try not to use it. Even though I've used it in the past and I consider it a very useful tool, but I think that with the current uh, versions of Java, Lombok has been less useful. Okay, what is Lombok? Lombok is basically a library that leverages and exploits a feature in Java called annotation preprocessing. It, gen it can generate methods like getters, setters, constructors, and classes from annotations at compile time. And why do I say that it exploits it? Uh, we'll see that later when we see how Lombok works. But first, what kind of things can we do with Lombok? What we can do is a lot of things. We can generate getters, setters, constructors. We can generate equals and hash code. We can generate to string. We can create builder classes. We can uh, turn checked exceptions into unchecked exceptions. We can add loggers to our classes, and that's just uh, some of the features. I would say that the most used features are here, about generating the getters, setters, constructors, uh, equals, hash code, and even creating builders is something that a lot of people do, I did as well. Uh, so there's a lot of functionality uh, with Lombok. And it has a lot of advantages uh, because you, you just put some annotations on your classes and basically it will generate this code for you. And uh, here's how Lombok works. So when a Java program is compiled, you have the Java source code here. We have the source code and the compilation process will generate something that is called the abstract source tree, which is a representation of the source code as a tree, as a data structure, the, the tree data structure. This is then used by another process called the annotation preprocessing. What is the annotation preprocessing? That is a part of the compilation process in which some annotations are, are uh, read by the compiler and it will generate code based on some instructions for those annotations. And this is a very common practice for a lot of frameworks. Usually the annotation preprocessing is used to generate new classes, not to modify existing classes. But here's the thing, uh, the Lombok uh, people have figured out a way to actually modify your class by uh, exploiting a deficiency in this process. So they are able to modify existing classes. That's why they are able to create uh, getters, setters, constructors. They can even create extension methods. Uh, so it's crazy the things that they can do with this. Uh, the thing is, after these methods and everything is added into your class, this altered um, source tree is then used to generate the bytecode, which is basically the code that will be read by your Java virtual machine. So basically, after the generation of the bytecode, we have the compiled Java class, the dot class uh, files, which is written in bytecode. So that is how Lombok uh, works. And uh, this is a very controversial thing because this is basically not supposed to happen. This is not the way 
that the annotation preprocessing was intended to be used, but they were able to use it in this way. So um, I believe that it works for them. So who can blame them? So let's see some examples of Lombok in action so that then we can compare them to the new feature in Java 14, the records, and see which one we would use. All right, so in our last episode, we created this person record, and this is our data class. It has a constructor, and we saw that you can, you get out of the box, the equals and hash code and the to string and the constructor, and everything is private and final. So there's a lot of functionality out of the box because this is a record. And this is really, really useful. And if you haven't seen the video, uh, I invite you to look at it because it's really good for you to understand how you can use records. Uh, but other than that, this is a very useful feature. And let's see how we would implement another class using Lombok. So here we have a class and we would like to use Lombok to basically do something similar to a data class. So Lombok has a lot of annotations that we can use. For example, we can use getter and setter. So now if I do a main and I want to, let's say I create a new pet, for example, and I put it here, say pet, and then I can do pet.set uh, pet, right? I don't know why I named this pet. This should be a uh, name. Let's just name, rename it to name. Okay. So IntelliJ has a very good Lombok plugin. So you can see I have a setter method, even though I don't have any setter. And I can say uh, name and let's say um, Nero. And then I can also say uh, set species dot, right? And I can print this. Let's say um, my dog's name is, let's just say, pet.name. Yeah, we, we, can, we can use the getter method, which we haven't written. So if we run this, you see, we were able to write the name of the dog, even though we haven't really created the get the setter method. And we were able to use the getter even though we didn't write it. So that's the power of Lombok. And now, uh, what are the things we can do? Okay, we can do um, do string. So if you look at this, and we can say, let's let's just say my pet is, and let's run this. Now we should use the to string method implemented by Lombok. You see, my pet is name Nero species dot. And actually this method to string is really customizable. So you can you can customize, for example, uh, you can say which fields should be included, which fields shouldn't be included. Uh, if whether you whether or not you should call the superclass for the two string, um, you can you can do a lot of uh, customization. What other things we can do? We can create a constructor. So for example, let's say we want a constructor for all the fields. We could say all args constructor. So now we cannot use this one. We cannot use the default constructor because this class has a constructor for all arguments. So we would need to say something like put the name here and the species here. But actually, we can also add a no args constructor. So now we have two constructors. We have this one and we can use 
the um, the other the Olags constructor. You see, and we can run this, and we will see the same thing. Okay, so it's extremely powerful. We can even add um, a builder class. If I use the annotation builder, I can basically say pet pet builder, sorry, pet, and I can use this method, which it appear out of nowhere because I cannot see it here. I just have the annotation, but I don't have the actual builder implemented anywhere. And then I can say name, and it will be, uh, let's say, uh, Nero. Or oh, let's just name it another thing. Let's just name it Rocky. And then Species. And it will be uh, Dot. Okay. And then I just say Build. I call the method Build. Let's organize this a bit more. I don't know why. Yeah. And now let's run this. And you can see we have a pet named Rocky, which is a dog. So I have now a builder, even though I didn't really create any builder class. And this is an actual class. This is a pet builder class that was generated inside the pet class. So it's an inner class. So extremely, extremely powerful. What else? Uh, we can add hash code and equals. I think it's equals and hash code. Yeah. So we have all this. And now we can compare dogs. And it will use different fields. And of course, this can be customized. So you can, you can say which fields you have to use. Or you can... Um, and the same with the builder. You can customize the builder. Uh, like the builder class name whether or not you can transform an object into a builder, um, what is the builder method, is there any prefix for the setters? I mean, a lot of customization. Really, really powerful. And um, you can think that these are a lot of annotations, but actually you can replace most of this with the, uh, with the data annotation. So now, you have all the same functionality, but with only one annotation, which is, wow. Um, so, why do I say that I avoid Lombok if I have all this functionality? Well, the, the, there, are, there are a lot of things. Uh, one of the things is that there is no, there, you lose code transparency. Uh, if you see, I have this method here. If I want to see what this method does, I don't really know. I don't know how this is implemented. I cannot go to the method. I need to understand that because I'm using Lombok, this comes out of the box. Uh, the same with the getters, the setters, and everything. Uh, so that could be a problem for someone new in the project or for someone that doesn't understand how Lombok works. Um, there is a there is a fact that Lombok is a third party which we don't control and this is not the Java official team. And because of that, it could be uh, tricky for some organizations to trust whatever code Lombok is injecting into their classes. So that's why some organizations uh, really don't want to use Lombok. Uh, another issue that arises with Lombok is what I said before about they exploiting a deficiency in the annotation preprocessing. The annotation preprocessing was created to generate new classes, but it's not created for modifying existing classes. And uh, because Lombok is doing this, it could be the case that in the future, the people who maintain the Java compiler 
decide to actually fix this problem and remove this capability altogether. And that could be a problem for, for the project Lombok. So, and that could mean a lot of problems for people who are counting on Lombok. Um, another thing that moved me to stop using it is that I have a lot of functionality that I was getting from Lombok, which I would say it was the main functionality for me, the, the data uh, annotation, which I'm getting with the records, which is language support. So now with records, I have language support instead of counting on a third party to generate this code for me. So I think that records are better than the data classes. There's also the risk that the project Lombok might be abandoned and then we would be out of support for our code. So if no one is maintaining Lombok and we find a bug in it, then we might be in, in a problem because no one is maintaining it and then we would need to change everything in our code base because of that bug so there is a lot of uh, issues that you may encounter uh, with Lombok so taking all of this into account you can see why I tend to avoid Lombok now that we have the Java records and that I've learned how Lombok actually works so what do you think? Do you use Lombok in your projects? Do you not use it? Do you think it's a good tool? Do you think it's a bad tool? Do you think it's uh, something that could uh, get you into a problem in the future? Let me know your thoughts. I am really interested and I want to say that I've used Lombok in the past. I might use it if I really need to in some scenarios, but as of now, I would try to avoid it because of all the things that I said in this uh, video. So let me know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like, and all those fun stuff. And, um, and I'll be waiting for all of you in the next episode. Bye.